Making a game solo requires a ton of different skills. One of the most important being project management. I would love it if I could release my main project that I'm working on, ModMass, in say 8 to 12 months. But realistically, I wouldn't be surprised if it could end up taking 2-3 to three years before the game reaches the vision I have for it. Now whether we're talking about 8-12 to 12 months or 2-3 to three years, that's still a long period of time. So it was important to make sure that I'm on pace to make sure I'm making good progress on this project. However, it's difficult enough to estimate how long it takes to develop software, but the fact that I haven't actually released a game before doesn't make that any easier. I decided I wanted to fix that problem of me never releasing a game before by participating in my first ever game jam. For those of you that don't know what a game jam is, a game jam is a lot like Lego Masters or Master Chef, where a theme is given out and you have a limited amount of time to create something according to that theme. In Lego Masters, they build Lego models, and in Master Chef, they cook delicious dishes, but in game jams, we make games. I've known about game jams for a while now, but never decided to enter one yet because I'm more focused on my main projects. However, I felt like switching gears for a short period of time would actually be pretty good for my creative juices and thus beneficial to the project for the long term. And as soon as I began looking for game jams to participate in, like fate, one of the indie dev YouTubers I follow, Lost Relic Games, I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below posted a video announcing that he was going to host his first ever game jam. The timing of this seemed too good to be true. This is it. Let's do it. Chapter 1. The Planning Many jams are typically 48 to 72 hours long, but jams exist with all kinds of time lengths. I was originally going to look for a 48 hour one to test my skills in a 48 hour setting, but this jam ended up being an entire week. Well, 9 days to be exact. This was a little longer than I had hoped for, but I decided to go all in on this and take that entire week off and dedicate it to this jam. The thing about these jams is that to keep the playing field fair, the theme isn't announced until shortly before the jam begins, so there's no way to really properly prepare. So for the weeks leading up to it, I spent my time working on my main project and living life normally, mentally preparing myself to grind for the whole week if needed. For a project of any size, burnout is another aspect that needs to be managed. I needed to be prepared to grind the entire week, but ideally I would like to avoid that extreme. I want to keep the pace of a typical 9-5 to work week with a little extra overtime to get a measure of what I can accomplish in a week without destroying myself. However, I do want to perform my best in this game jam as it will be my first ever game release, so I will go the extra mile if necessary. I was getting pretty hyped, but had to suppress this as I did not want to get burnt out before the jam even started. In the weeks leading up to the jam, I did create a basic set of milestones that I wanted to keep. The jam was scheduled to run from Friday, June 10th to Sunday, June 19th, with the theme being announced on Thursday, June 9th. My goal was to get a working, playable game loop by the end of the opening weekend, and then dedicate the rest of the week to polishing the game, and leave that last Friday night slash Saturday to launch the game. When it comes to making games, you may have heard the saying, the first 90% of creating a game takes 10% of the time, the last 10% takes 90% of the time. And the reason for this is because of art and polish. A mechanic can be made rather quickly, but with adding art and polish, it can become an entire experience. This schedule and milestones did not account for the theme being announced on Thursday, June 9th at 10 a.m., which should give me an extra day of wiggle room in case I run into any roadblocks, whether it be technical or creative. As for any other high-level prep, I didn't know what the theme was going to be, but I do have a few game ideas that I keep in my back pocket that I would like to work on someday. For a week-long project, I was hoping that this Endless Runner idea would end up being a good fit with whatever theme is announced. I felt like the scope of an Endless Runner game would be a good fit for a one-week development period, but again, without the theme being announced, there's no proper way to truly plan. Only time will tell. Thursday, June 9th, 10 a.m. Eastern. It's time to check the theme and get a head start on my schedule for this game jam. I went to the game jam itch.io page to check the theme and it was... Connection. Immediately I hit a creative roadblock. Connection? What the heck do I do with connection? This theme doesn't really work well at all with the endless runner idea I would have liked to use. But worse, I have no idea what kind of mechanic or art style to use for this that could be completed in one week's time. I was truly stumped. And instead of getting that hopeful head start on development I would like to have had, I immediately had to change my schedule to dedicate all of Thursday to brainstorming and coming up with an idea. All I needed to do was come up with an idea by the end of the day Thursday that I could begin working on Friday. A gameplay mechanic that could be completed by the end of the week 
weekend that fits the connection theme, as well as an idea for an art direction that would work well with said mechanic. I spent all day completely stumped. I went out to the bar with some friends and thought maybe I would get inspired there, but no, I couldn't think of any ideas. It was really a great start. Connection? What to do with connection? After the bar when I got home, I went on an evening walk, which I usually do when I'm stuck on problems. And sure enough, an idea came to me that gave me the ability to begin working on it. Now this is a game that's going to be made in only one week, yet I want it to feel polished like a final product. But in order to keep the scope small, it would be in my best interest to keep the mechanics small as well. In fact, I want it to be so small that the player can feel like they can know exactly how to play the game within the first 30 seconds. See, there ended up being around 2,000 people signed up for this jam, with 414 games actually getting finished and submitted before the end. I'm sure whoever is judging these games is not going to be spending a whole lot of time playing each one, so I wanted to make sure that I had a short and sweet experience that could be sold in the first 30 seconds. Chapter 2. The Mechanic I decided to start with the slot machine as the base for this game. Everybody already knows how to play a slot machine. You just pull the lever or click a button and the game does the rest as it is all random. However, I want the user to have some feeling of control over it and have the satisfaction of feeling like they made a good play. So I was thinking of fusing the game Yahtzee in with the slot machine mechanic. How many times have you played a slot machine and thought, ah, I was so close, because you're only one away from having a full line? Well, for this game, I want to address that by allowing the player to hold as many slots as they would like for the rest of a round which consists of three total spins, and the final payout line calculation runs at the end of the three spins, much like Yahtzee and how you can roll the dice three times, leaving the dice that you would like to keep. So the connection theme would play into the mechanic by connecting the same pieces in a line to score points. Art-wise, I feel like maybe there could be some nodes at the end of each of these lines that you're connecting things together. My first idea was maybe each node would be somebody making a phone call and the payout line representing the phone signal connecting one person to another person. And then after you connect them, they go off the screen and then later you can see them walking around in the background with each other. So because you made a connection with them on the board, they are now connected with each other in person outside of their phones, which is the ultimate form of connection that tends to feel like it is slowly fading away. Way. I wasn't exactly sure how I would pull off the art representation of this idea, but this was enough train of thought where I felt comfortable pursuing this game mechanic, knowing that it has potential for art that fits the connection theme to be added into it later down the line. I began work on the slot machine mechanic at the simplest level. I created a script that would pick a random number out of a list and display it each frame. I tied this to a start and stop button, so when you click the start, the numbers begin to shuffle, and when you click stop, they stop. I added in a delay variable so that each slot could end at different times, creating this waterfall effect as if it was a slot machine. Once I had this working, I created 5 rows of this so we had a 5x5 five five slot machine to work with. I then built a round and spin counter so I could begin creating the holding mechanic of keeping slot values that the player would like to keep. I made it so that you get 3 spins per round, and when you click on the square it becomes green. When you spin again, that square won't change during the spin until the turn is over, or the player decides to no longer hold on to that value by clicking on it again. Once I had that working, I had to figure out how exactly the scoring system would work. I wasn't sure if the player would have control over how they built their lines to score, or if the game should automatically calculate it for you. I decided to make this more similar to real slot machines and have the game automatically calculate the points at the end of the round to help reduce any potential confusion for the players so they can feel like they understand how the game works in the first 30 seconds or so of playing. Going into this, I realized that this may be the hardest part of the entire project. After taking a several hour break just to think about how to tackle this problem, I decided to limit the algorithm to calculate the following way. We will start at the top and work our way down row by row. Whichever number is in the first column, we would take that number and check the top right box of the next column. If the number is the same as the one we started with, we will move our marker over to that square and begin to check the next space. If there's not a match to be found, we will go back and continue to check where it last left off. But in order to do this, I had to create some rules such that you cannot connect up or down or backwards, and each slot can only be used within one win line. This one was also applied for the art direction, as I at least want only one node to connect to one other node so the personal connection theme can apply. Using some UI sliders for lines, I created all possible connection lines that we were going to check for. The plan is that during the connection check, we are going to store all the values of a winning line into a list, 
And the way I have named each of these squares and lines, they have a naming convention such that I can easily identify which ones I should enable or disable. Working with these numbers and white squares started to become a bit difficult to keep track of, so I decided to add color to these squares to help identify the rows and matches. Because the colors are now tied to numbers, I had to move away from using green as my design for keeping the pieces. I installed the GUI pack into the project that I used while making my unreleased mobile game as I knew it has some pretty good UI icons in it that maybe I could work with. I found this window-like one and decided to edit it in Photoshop to create an outline bracket image that can be used as an indicator for when the player is holding that piece. Nice. And after much more work and grinding, I got the basics of this working. But there were still some bugs and edge cases to be solved. But now that I felt like I had a solid foundation, I felt confident that I could sprinkle these bug fixes into the rest of my week as I work on art and polish, which still had an uncertain direction, but definitely potential. This wrapped up the opening weekend, and I felt comfortable with my pacing. Chapter 3. The Art and Polish I was starting to feel a bit uninspired with the plain black background, so I started looking for assets on OpenGameArt.com. I considered embracing the slot machine theme and going with a casino style background, but I couldn't find anything really fitting. I kept thinking back on the art theme idea of how these pay lines could really be cell phone signals connecting people with one another, but wasn't sure what kind of background would work well for this with the people to be walking around in the background after making a connection. That's when I came across this landscape picture by Pepper Raccoon. I thought this was an absolutely beautiful piece, and dare I say, I connected with it. I plugged it into the game and was really feeling the vibe here, but the biggest problem with this picture was this giant egg in the foreground. It was such a central piece of this image that I felt like it would be too much to remove, and honestly I didn't want to remove it. I liked the egg. This is when I got a new spark of inspiration and decided to embrace the egg. Instead of humans calling each other on their cell phones, how about we go with a bit more of a nature feel and have birds getting connected with each other and then the more connections you make, the more birds you see flying around in the background. I thought this could work well so I decided to go this route. I created a Bracky style audio manager and downloaded some nature bird sounds and plugged it all in to see if it made the scene feel more alive. I was definitely feeling the vibe of this. However, once the bird sounds were in, there was one thing that stood out that was really breaking the immersion, and that were these birds in the background here. If this scene is meant to feel alive when the player gets further into the game, then these static birds definitely break the immersion. These were worthy of removal via Photoshop. I put a bit more work into the main slot assets and found some dice pictures. I thought about using fruits like slot machines, but I prefer the look of the dice, and I like that the dice don't actually have numbers on them, but there's still a way to identify which piece is which in case the player is colorblind, so I wanted to make sure I had some accessibility options in the design. Next, I decided to create the scoreboard. I want this to be a 10 round game, so that way the player can feel comfortable knowing that there's an endpoint to the game. I went with the bowling frame system so that the player will play 10 rounds of 3 spins per round and their final score is calculated at the end of 10 rounds. With a maximum of 5 points per round, the maximum total score for the game is 50 points, which is also a way a player can measure if they had a good game or not. Next, I added a wildcard piece to be like a bonus slot in a slot machine. I updated the code that performs the win check to take into account this piece and treat it as a valid piece for any color line. I updated the stop and start button, making it just a single spin press button like a slot machine, added a pause button, and finally some bird sprites I found on the Unity Asset Store. These were the only free bird images they had, but conveniently I feel like they worked really well with the rest of the art here. I couldn't find any better bird sprites on any other asset site. Making the birds fly off screen and then pair up in the background actually might be a contender for what ended up being the hardest part of this project. I couldn't figure out a way quickly to dynamically create the paired birds out of the bird prefabs I made, so I ended up grinding and making separate prefabs out of each bird color combination. The hardest part though was getting the birds to fly behind all the objects on the screen as everything takes place on the UI layer. I ended up learning a lot about how layers work in Unity and feel like this is going to be a really useful takeaway for my main project. This is when my boy MKing Productions connected with me and asked if I'd like any help with the music for the game. You may have already heard some of his music in my previous videos, and his links are always in the description. We have a history of working well together, so I said hell yeah, go for it. I sent him a video of the current gameplay at this time, and less than 24 hours later, he sent me the track. I absolutely love the chill vibe of this track. 
I thought it was perfect. Now I just need a title screen and artwork to go along with it. One of the most important aspects of any title screen is the name of the game. So it was getting to be that time to come up with a name of the game so I can make a logo for it. I was thinking of Slotsy, as it's a fusion of slot machines and Yahtzee. I used some mobile logo fonts I had, which defaulted with Crystal Rush as an example. This was getting me to think of adding an extra word to the title as Slotsy alone felt a little bland. I considered exercising my power as a solo dev and calling it Slotsy 3000, but ended up deciding to stay on theme and calling it Slotsy Connect. It was going to be tricky to find art that worked well with the Pepper Raccoon landscape image, but since we are going with the bird direction for the art theme now, I thought about having the title screen focus on the sky as it would be easier to transition from the sky down to the landscape scene. And then I can throw in a bunch of the bird pairs to fill up the empty space, giving the scene some color, and let the player know what kind of vibe to expect when they begin playing the game. I was really happy with how things were turning out. The last thing to do was add in some more menus like a settings screen with some basic settings like turning the music on and off, sound effects, and full screen and windows mode. I also decided to add in a stats screen so the player can have something to keep track of when they continue to play the game. I didn't include anything too fancy here, just the player's highest score, number of games played, and lifetime connections made, which I thought was also pretty fitting to have for the theme. And then it hit me. One last thing to do. I personally love achievements and hidden unlockables in games, so I decided I wanted to add one to this game as well. Hidden in the settings screen, I added a fourth setting called Slotsy 3000. When the player clicks it, they'll be given a message that the setting is locked until they have over 3000 lifetime connections. Once it's unlocked, if they turn it on, then the title on the title screen will be changed to Slotsy 3000 and the screen will be filled with gold particles to celebrate. And there you have it. That was the making of my first ever indie game release, which you can download right now for free on itch.io, which I'll leave a link to in the description. At the time of the release of this video, the game jam is still in the voting phase, so I do not know how this entry performed yet, but either way, I'm happy with the results of this one week long project and look forward to doing another game jam in the future. So make sure to subscribe to this channel if you want to get your hands on some free games in the future. Oh, and if you are a Mac user, there is a download on the itch.io page for Mac as well, but you'll most likely get blocked when trying to run it. There should be instructions on the itch.io page with a workaround to try to get this running. Let me know your feedback on this game and if it's something you would like me to port over to mobile or web browser if you prefer to play it that way. Thank you so much if you made it this far into this video. Make sure you give it a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.